Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak tutorial. So we have another improvement for being able to load your PlayStation 5 game backups on the PS5, so your dumped PlayStation 5 games. So we covered the dump runner in a previous video, and since then we've had the dump installer as well, which further improves things and makes it more convenient to install your PlayStation 5 game dumps so that you can launch them directly from the home menu like any other application. But since then we've had another improvement, and this is a new project from Void Whisper called Shadow Mount version 1.2 beta, which is currently the latest version, but we'll likely see other improvements to this release over time. And you can see here, this is the initial public release, which supports auto mounting of game dumps from the internal or external storage without the need of external tools. So no more needs for the web server payload with the homebrew launcher to run the dump installer to then install your games or something like item slow with ETA hen. This again can be used with ETA hen or it can be used separately just with K-Stuff. So you also have the option there to use K-Stuff standalone or ETA Hen, depending on which one you want to use there. And we have two payloads. So there's a Notify Elf and the Shadow Mount Elf. Now, the reason for two payloads, the Shadow Mount Elf is the actual payload that does the auto mounting. So the idea is as soon as you plug in a USB drive or you have game dumps on your internal storage, it will automatically scan for those dumps and then create a shortcut on the home menu that can be used to load them directly. So it will do that all automatically for you. You also have this notify.elf file, which is optional, and that will just change the notifications to say when it's scanning for applications and when it's found an application to install, it will give you the newer style notifications in the top right-hand corner instead of the regular debug notifications in the top left. So that's all that does. It's optional. You do not have to add it. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we're going to download the shadow mount and notify.elf file. We also want to grab the YouTube jailbreak update.zip file if you're using the YouTube jailbreak auto loader to load the jailbreak. So if you want to load your games off a USB drive, then make sure you get the fastest USB drive possible. So either a SATA SSD with a USB adapter or even better would be an NVMe drive in a USB enclosure that supports up to USB 3.1 Gen 2 speeds of 10 gigabit per second, which will give you the maximum throughput you can get for your read and write speeds when connected to the PS5 via USB to one of the back USB ports that supports 10 gigabit per second. That's gonna give you the best speed. So on the USB, we're gonna right click on it and go to properties and make sure that the file system is XFAT, not FAT32 for copying your game dumps over. We need it to be XFAT. So you can right click and format it and change it to XFAT file system if you're using a different format and then click start to reformat the drive, but obviously back up any data on the drive before reformatting it. Okay, so once we're on the USB, we need to get our YouTube jailbreak autoloader set up to load this new payload, along with ETA hen or K stuff, depending on which one you want to use. So we're going to open up the YouTube jailbreak update.zip file and copy out the PS5 autoloader folder to the root of the USB. Then we're going to open this up and delete the FTP payload that's in here. And we want to copy either ETA hen or K stuff into this folder whichever one you want to use. I'm using ETA hen, but you can also use kstuff standalone, which would just be the kstuff.elf of the latest version of kstuff. And then also we want the shadow mount and the notify.elf. This is again, if you want the notifications popping up to tell you when it's scanning and when it's found a game to install, then you can install that notify.elf, but it is optional. So once we have that all set up, we can open up the autoload.txt file, and then we can just delete everything that's in this text file. And now we just add the ETA hen payload first or K stuff into that text file as the first payload to load. And then the second one will be the shadow mount.elf file if that's all you want to load. Obviously, you can also add the notify elf uh, between the ETA hen and shadow mount if you want to. Uh, otherwise, if you just want to stick with the normal notifications and only have the two payloads loaded, then go ahead and just add ETA hen or K stuff and then shadow mount.elf second and save the file. Now, as a side note, the sample configuration for the payload does show these exclamation point 1000 millisecond delays being added between loading each payload. So you can add that if you are having issues with the payload not loading. So the one second delays are just designed to give each payload time to execute before loading the next one. For whatever reason though, whenever I add these one second delays or any second delays, it always seems to cause one of the payloads not to work. So for me, it always works better not adding the delays, but again, your mileage may vary. The next step, of course, is going to be to get our game dumps installed. 
So I'm going to right click and create a new homebrew folder on here. And inside this homebrew folder, we're going to copy our game dumps inside. So we can see it's on USB F homebrew. So what I'm going to do is find my game dumps. So I have a few game dumps here. We'll take Dead Space Remake first. So I'll open this up. Here's the compressed version of the game dump that is in this RAR file. I'm going to right click and use 7-zip to extract it. So I'll leave a link to 7-zip in the description if you don't have it. And then we're going to extract files. And I'm going to paste in the location where I want to extract it to, the homebrew folder on my USB, and click OK and let it extract that game dump into that folder. OK, there we go. So we have got our game extracted. If I was on a 4.x firmware, I would also extract the backport patch into the same folder uh, that has been dumped there from the game to get it working on 4.x firmwares. But I'm on 10.01, so I don't need the backport patch here. So that is basically it. We have everything set up here. So all I need to do is eject this USB and plug it into the back USB port or one of the back USB ports on the PS5. Now I'm only doing one game at the moment because I want to see what happens once the uh, payload is actually running and we disconnect the drive and add another game on and then plug it back in and see if it automatically adds that game or if we have to send the payload again which would make it not as great but we'll kind of see if it works the way that I hope it does here. Now if you're loading ETA Hen 2.5b for the first time and you don't have the latest version of KStuff loaded if it says it's loading version 1.6.6 of KStuff instead of 1.6.7 you will need to go into your debug settings or ETA Hen toolbox go into the settings and then the KStuff menu and then from there you'll be able to update the latest version of KStuff from GitHub which will download the latest version and install it so that the next time you load the jailbreak it will load the latest version of KStuff 1.6.7 which is needed in order for this plugin to work correctly. So make sure you're using the latest version of KStuff if you're loading it from within ETA Hen. And of course, you'll need to have a network connection to be able to use that feature on your console. Alternatively, you can upload the KStuff file directly. I'll leave a link to it in the description. You can use FTP to transfer it over to the forward slash data slash ETA Hen folder on the hard drive on the console storage. So you can also upload it manually to that location as well if you're not able to use the auto update feature. So let's go ahead and run our YouTube jailbreak auto loader to run the jailbreak. And that should run our ETA hen payload or case stuff, depending on which one you're loading here. So we get ETA hen loaded first, and then we can also see it's loading the game mounter as well. There we go, two new games starting. So it has successfully detected it. Looks like it is running. Found a new game installing Astrobot. That's actually one that's not on the USB drive. So it obviously picked that one up from the internal storage. So all dumps configured. Enjoy Void Whisper. So this is the regular notifications. I did not add the notify payload. So this is just the normal notifications you get. We'll also try with the other notify payload to see how different the notifications are there. But as you can see, that is us up and running. We've got Astrobot. So yeah, let's go ahead and try and run them. So Dead Space Remake installed off USB storage. So this one is on the USB drive. So it'll take a little bit longer to load initially. But as you can see, there we go. The game is now running. So that's our Dead Space remake loaded directly off the USB drive that we copied over there. And then Astrobot is in the data folder in the ETA Hen games folder. So it was able to detect that game dump as well and install it as a usable shortcut that can be launched directly off the homepage. And yep, there it is. Astrobot is now loading as well. So yeah, pretty fantastic plugin. But what I want to see is how it works if I unplug the USB drive now, load another game on, will the payload still be running in the background and will it detect when I add another game to the USB? So let's go ahead and test this. So I'm going to unplug the USB. Okay, so we've got our homebrew folder where we've got our game dump for Dead Space Remake. And now I will also extract another game. Let's take Returnal. So I'll go ahead and extract this one Returnal over to the same location. Okay, so now that I have that game extracted, I'll go ahead and make sure that the folder structure is the same as our other game dump. So the title ID of the game dash app. And that should be good there. So let's go ahead and see what happens now if we eject this USB drive and plug it in. Back to our PS5. And yep, there we go. Found a new game, installing Returnal. So it is actively monitoring the USB and the other locations for any new game dumps 
that get added. And there it is. Returnal now shows up. So yeah, I mean, I do love how this payload works here. It's nice. It's just running in the background. Whenever you add a new game dump onto your USB, plug it into your PS5, it will automatically detect it and install it. And now we should be able to launch Returnal by just launching it here directly from the home menu. And as soon as we reboot the jailbreak, we can also run these shortcuts directly from the home menu to load your games too. No longer have to go into either Items Flow or the Homebrew Launcher to get your game dump installed. So finally, I want to see what the difference is if I add the Notify payload. So if we take the PS5 Auto Loader text file, open it back up again, and this time we make sure that we tell it to run the Notify payload first. So after ETA Hen, we run Notify and then Shadow Mount in that particular order. And we'll see, you know, what the difference in the notifications are when we have it set up like this. Okay, so now when we run the YouTube Jailbreak Auto Loader, it should load the notification payload first, which it does, and then also the shadow mount. And there we go. We can see we get the different notifications showing up there. Installed return all, and then also dead space installed. So it seems to be using the old notifications and the new notifications here. And uh, there could be also be some kind of confliction with ETA Hen, which also uses the new uh, notification style. But we can see there, installed Returnal is showing up along with Astrobot. So yeah, if you use the notify.elf, you just get these different notifications in the top right hand corner instead of the regular debug notifications in the top left if you just use the shadowmount.elf. That's really the only difference you're getting when you add that notify.elf file. But yeah, there you go. It's installed all three Again, Astrobot from my internal storage and then the two that are on my USB drive. Also, if you want to have this set up installed permanently so that whenever you run the YouTube Jailbreak Auto Loader, it will load this version, then you can install it to the hard drive instead of having it run off the USB. So for instance, all you got to do is simply use an FTP client like FileZilla, enter your PS5's IP address in the host box, port number 1337 when running ETA Hen, and then you can connect remotely to your console over the network. So obviously the console needs to be connected to the network and then we can go into the data folder here and then from the data folder you can see I already have a PS5 autoloader folder but I could just take the one that I was loading from the USB and copy it into this folder and then that way I don't need the USB drive plugged in to have this set up where it will load ETA Hen and then the shadow mount as well. It will just load from the hard drive instead. You could also use PS5 Explorer to copy it over but I have got reports recently of people saying it's not working when they're copying it over using PS5 Explorer. So there could be a file permission issue there on certain firmwares. So to avoid that, just use an FTP client if you can. So overall, I do think this is the most convenient way to get your PlayStation 5 game dumps installed, at least loaded off a USB drive. Now, if you want more options like the ability to copy the games to the internal storage or an M.2 drive, be able to delete the game files as well if you want to remove a game to free up space to add another one. Well, in that case, Items Flow is still the best option for this, which you need to have ETA Hen loaded to use Items Flow. And then you can use that application. It can also be downloaded from the Homebrew store. So loading Items Flow, you can then go to the PS5 app section, scan for applications, which will scan for all of the, you know, installed game backups that you have. And once they're added, you can then select the game backup within Items Flow and you have the IO options which allow you to copy or move or delete an application. And then you can use those options to, you know, copy an application to the internal storage, in which case you'd want to copy it to the forward slash data forward slash ETA hen slash games directory. And then you can basically select that directory and it will copy that game across over to the internal storage. So that's one option. And once you have it copied, you can delete the one from your USB. And then when it does the auto scan again with the shadow mount, it will detect that game that is now on the internal storage and add it so that you can load it directly from the home menu. So you have those options there and you can also use the delete feature within items flow to delete a game completely. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.